Hey everyone, this is DWS Darius, and you guys just met most of the fish that live inside my 350 gallon aquarium. There are some fish that I had to leave out, those are the fish that like to hide. Like I have a few catfish hiding within the rocks. I have a female jaguar cichlid, she's in there hiding. And she's hiding because I just added her to the tank about a week ago, and she's been getting a lot of aggression from some of the other female parachroma species. Um, one of the catfish that rarely comes out is actually out right now, which is pretty rare. Back there I have my green phantom pleco and look they block it. They block the view. But yeah, green phantom pleco is one of the catfish that you rarely see. But um, today I want to discuss a little bit of the power and politics of this aquarium. Break down the hierarchy a little bit. I find it very interesting just to watch these fish develop their community. Um, sometimes I want one fish to become tank boss and the exact opposite occurs. And this is something that I have little power over. The ranking and the hierarchy and the demographics of this aquarium is completely left to the fish. And so yeah, I find it very interesting. And today I want to give you guys a breakdown of who's the boss and who's not. Okay, so first off, earlier you saw my African leaf fish in this aquarium. I took him out this morning and this was a plan I had for a long time. He was in this aquarium but his tank mates were getting a little bit too big for him, a little bit too aggressive towards him. So I thought it was best to just put him inside of my African cichlid tank. And I think he should get a decent amount of respect from the Mabuna cichlids because he's the bigger fish. And also he should help me with population control because those Mabuna are breeding like crazy. I have about a dozen little baby Mabuna surviving in this aquarium. And then I have two females holding more eggs in their mouth. So if I don't do something about it, they're going to overstock the aquarium. So the leaf fish will be a perfect addition to that aquarium. Back inside my 350, I also have my Bala sharks in this tank. These guys, they don't participate in a hierarchy. They have a hierarchy amongst themselves, but they're really in the aquarium just to provide a little bit more activity. Um, these guys are non-stop moving and they're great in this aquarium. And lastly, the catfish in this tank. These guys don't participate in a hierarchy either. Sometimes you may find a catfish wrestling with some of the cichlids, but they're really no main power in this aquarium. Now, when it comes to the cichlids, these guys are just a very aggressive group of fish. By nature, all these fish are known to be very aggressive. We have fish like the Mayan cichlid, we have the Red Terror, we have the Aja cichlids, which are the dominant group of fish in this aquarium. And these guys are known to be very aggressive despite their beautiful and peaceful looks. These guys are nasty. We have a um, Madagascar cichlid, the Starry Night cichlid, another fish that is known to be very aggressive. We have jaguars and dovis. Fish that are all notorious for being aggressive. So naturally this is a very aggressive aquarium. Um, for me, it's actually not that bad. If I had to rate the aggression in this aquarium, I would rate it six out of 10. Now, of course, six isn't something we want to deal with, but it's not too bad because I don't have fish dying. I don't have fish stressed out to the point where they're always hiding or they're not eating or anything like that. Um, it's balanced, like I said, because most of the fish in this tank are aggressive by nature. But at the same time, it's not um, a tank that, if you want to relax and just have a peaceful time, this is definitely not the tank you want to look at. Um, but yeah, this is the 350, and I want to break down the ranks and who's boss. So currently, as of today, the current tank boss is my female parasite. That is the fish up there in the back corner. She should come around because they're all ready to eat. So if I come in front of the tank like this, he will come to the center of the screen. And she is the tank boss simply because she is the biggest fish. She's about one year older than everybody else, with the exception of my Jack Dempsey. He's a very old fish, but he's um, a little bit deformed, so he's not as big as he could be. But everyone else, she's about one year older, and because of that, she's bigger. And because she's bigger, she intimidates more fish, and she currently is the tank boss. However, I do believe that eventually she will no longer be tank boss because everybody else is catching up in size, and we have fish that are just more aggressive in nature. Um, like these two right here. These are the second and third ranking fish in this tank. The second ranking fish is the Mayan cichlid. This fish right here, just a very aggressive fish by nature. She is a female. Males are generally more aggressive than males. Than males. Males are generally more aggressive than females. So for her to be second in rank just shows you how aggressive she really is. Uh, but yeah, she's second in rank because she just is non-stop trying to secure her position. She's willing to fight any and everyone in this aquarium. Right now she's going back and forth with the black belt. Normally the black belt submits to her. However, the black belt is feeling a little bit more empowered because he's pairing up with this female Finistratus. Now the black belt by himself, he would be the third ranking fish in this aquarium. But because he's joining forces with this female Finistratus together, they're gonna be a mated pair. Because they are fighting together, um, they have 
a clear opportunity to be just ultimate tank bosses in this aquarium as a pair. And I believe pretty soon they will be the bosses of this aquarium. Now as a pair they won't be able to control everybody, but what they will do is separate the entire right side of the aquarium, which is what they're slowly doing. Look at this. They're actually going against the highest ranking fish in this aquarium. So pretty soon they will be the complete tank bosses in this aquarium and they're going to cause everyone else to leave from that side of the tank. They're going to breed, they're going to be extremely aggressive. So eventually I may have to intervene. I may try to take them out so they can breed somewhere else. But as of now, these two are working on becoming the ultimate power in this aquarium. But let's say they weren't a pair. If they weren't a pair, the black belt, he would be the third ranking fish in this aquarium. Eventually he may become the most dominant fish in this aquarium. Males are by far more aggressive than females. And as he catches up in size, um, he's going to outgrow some of these females. And he definitely has a clear shot to be the ultimate tank boss in this aquarium. And honestly, I'm not sure if that's a good thing. As of now, he's a very aggressive fish. And once he's bigger, he's only going to get more aggressive. So who knows how that's going to be in the future. After that, the fourth ranking fish in this aquarium is my Vieja Brujoderai. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing these names correctly. These scientists name these fish pretty weird. So um, forgive me if I do incorrectly or uncorrectly pronounce these guys and their scientific names. But yeah, this is the four Franken fish. I actually like this guy. He's um, pretty aggressive. He is a male. And when I say a fish is a male or female, it's simply based on their character. I judge fish's gender based on their character, especially while they're young. When they're older, it's a little bit more easier to determine your sex. But at this age, I'm going based on character. And like I said, males are more aggressive than females. And based on character, this is definitely a male. He's the four franken fish. Like I said, I love his personality. He spends most of his day just right here looking at me. Whenever I clean the aquarium, he follows me around. So I'm a very interactive fish. And he also has a good shot of being the ultimate tank boss. He even challenges the black belt every now and then. Between the black belt and the brohodori, it's pretty much a matter of who gets bigger the fastest. Right now the black belt is winning because I had him a little bit longer, but on um, the Brohodorai, he just has that spirit of a tank boss. So he could potentially become tank boss. After that we have my Jack Dempsey Siglet. Like I said, this fish he's deformed, so that has a great impact on his rank. I believe that if he was like regular shaped Jack Dempsey, he would be bigger and he would be just a little bit more capable of defending himself and he would have a higher position. But because of his deformity, he is um, where he is. Not a bad fish, I'm not complaining. He's not too aggressive, and um, he's a beautiful fish. So he's over here. After that, the hierarchy does get a little bit more complicated because we're going into the, the common size of about five inches. The rest of the fish, I forgot to mention their sizes, but they're six inches and larger. He's about seven inches. The Mayan is about eight inches. The black belt is also about eight inches. A little bit thinner than the Mayan cichlid. And a pair size, she's about 13 inches. Um, so yeah, now we're going into the size range where everybody's a little bit closer in size. And because of that, the hierarchy is a little bit harder to determine who's king and who's not or who's higher ranking. But based on some of my observation, I believe that my female Dovi will be next in line. She's back there. She is about five and a half inches. She's um, a pretty aggressive fish. Of course, not as bad as a male. A male probably would not be able to be kept in this community aquarium. Females, they're the way to go if you want a community aquarium. I have a female Dovi, I have a female Jaguar, I have a female Jaguar Dovi hybrid, which are a very aggressive fish. Right here's a male, and this guy is just a monster. Look at this. You can't see it because my, my camera is too high, but let me bring it back for you. That guy is just insane, and partly is because he's a male. Um, so yeah, females are just not as bad as males. So if you want a community of just these cichlids that are known to be aggressive, go for females. So where are we now? I, I just mentioned the, um, the Dovi. So after that, I believe that the next ranking fish is my Mel Vieja by Fasciatus. I have six of these fish. These are one of my dream fish. I always wanted these fish. And so far, I'm loving the beauty of these fish. As of now, I, be I have six of them. And I believe I have two males, or at least two dominant males, one of which is right here. I know them by their size and based on their reactions or the reactions of the fish around them. Usually the dominant fish when he swims by everybody wants to get out of his way and we definitely see that with this fish right here. So he's one of the males and the thing is it seems like most of the fish can't determine which vieja is which when it comes to these guys. They all look pretty much the same 
and I believe that every time this big guy has a victory, everybody else is able to reap the benefits. Like the big guy, he just beat up this um, Argentius. Not beat up, but he just overpowered the Argentius. And because of that, all these other ones, which naturally would not be able to conquer that Argentius, they're more dominant as well because the Argentius can't tell the difference between them, which I find to be shocking. I thought that fish were able to distinguish um, the difference between each other, but apparently that's not the case because, like I said, this one dominant male, every time he beats up a fish, um, all the other fish are afraid of the entire group of these bifasciatus. So yeah, he's the most ranking out of the bifasciatus. Where is he? This guy right here. I know he's a male, one because of his growth rate, two because of his aggression, and three because um, he has the best color. They all have pretty decent color, but when you com compare his color to the true color of an adult, he's showing the best color. So, I have, so all those fish fit in the same category of the seven Franken fish, and that's because they're all together. I forgot to mention this female Finistratus. By herself, she would be above the Dovi. So she would be above the Dovi, but beneath this Bohorai. But of course she's not by herself, she's working with this guy, so because of that she has a lot of position and a lot of power. After that we have my female Jagovi. Actually it may be this guy right here, my Paratolapia. I say guy but I believe it's a female. Also because females grow very slow. That's another way I distinguish males from females when they're young. The females will grow very slow in comparison with the males. So you have this, this starry night cichlid. I believe that that is the next ranking fish. Look at the bottle shark trying to kiss my finger. Um, but yeah, not too aggressive, especially when you consider the stories that you hear about these um, starry night cichlids. I believe it's a female because of that. And then we have my female Jagovi over here. At times she looks very gorgeous. Right now she's just calm, so she's showing that brown color. But when she's in a mood, she shows a nice golden color. It almost looks looks like she's trying to seduce this Jack Dempsey. He's not interested, but every now and then I catch her showing off, shaking in front of him. It would be nice if they would pair up because I know it would help with some of the resistance against this pair. But um, for now, she's um, being rejected. And then underneath that rock, I have my female Jaguar. She's using that rock as a stronghold. Every now and then I catch her arguing with some of the fish through the rocks. But she's back there in those rocks and you can barely see her. After that, we have the smallest fish in the tank, the smallest cichlid. He's the smallest fish altogether, and that is my Mesoharis feste. Currently in this aquarium as a grow out, you see him back there. Um, it's showing a lot of signs of being a male. I wanted a female because I wanted, oh look. You just saw a glimpse of my Raphael catfish, a fish that rarely comes out. Um, but yeah, where is he? My feste, I wanted it to be a female because the females look awesome eventually. I wanted to put it in that aquarium. However, if it is a male, I may have to rehome it because my experience with males is that they are extremely aggressive, too aggressive for this aquarium. This, aqua this aquarium has much bigger fish that are much more peaceful. These are South American fish, mostly South American. I do have some jaguars that are from Central America, but altogether, this tank is much more peaceful than this aquarium. So I don't want to disrupt, disrupt that peace with an aggressive male festing. So we're gonna watch them. Hoping for a female, but if it is a male, if he is behave well, I may keep him, but if not, he will be rehomed. And that is the current scenario of this here aquarium. And the interesting thing is that this thing could change in as little as a week. These fish, um, it's just crazy how they are very, op they take opportunities. If I was to do like a rescape, you would have a change of power. If I was to like feed a special food, you might have a change of power. So it's pretty interesting watching how sensitive this this rank is. And one of the reasons why I believe it's so sensitive is because these fish are young. Like I said, they are close in size. And because of that, there is no clear advantage one over the other. The main thing that, the, that creates advantage is size when it comes to these fish. And really a lot of them are around the same size. Wait, did I forget to mention one of the beautiful fish in this aquarium? This guy right here, or this lady. Um, I do believe that she's a female. I keep saying guy because I just usually relate or refer to my fish as guys, but I do believe that this Argentine is behind this black belt or behind this Mayan cichlid. I do believe that she is a female. She's a very well behaved vieja. Out of all the vieja in this aquarium, she's the most behaved, very calm, very peaceful fish. I wouldn't mind her being Tank Boss because she's calm, but I doubt that she ever becomes Tank Boss just because of her calm nature. But um, when it comes to the rank, she's just below the vieja. Um, she's just below these guys right here. So um, yeah, she's a very beautiful fish. Can't believe I forgot her, but there's just a lot going on. So forgive me for forgetting her. But yeah, this is my 350 
a very interesting aquarium, a very dangerous aquarium to live in. If, if you're a fish, this is um, definitely um, a high risk environment. But um, these fish can handle it. Like I said, it is their nature. Eventually as they grow, I believe that they will be a little bit more calmer because as they grow, they will develop a greater understanding of each other. They will be able to know who's extremely aggressive, who's not that aggressive, and they will just learn their ways better and just learn to go ex coexist better. Right now they've been together for about a year, so they're still learning, but eventually um, I believe they will get it and it will be nice. Eventually I may have to take some fish out because this tank will be overstocked because most of the fish will get the same size of this female parasite. The female parasite I believe is the minimum size of some of these fish because she is a female, males usually get bigger. So with that in mind, I will have to take some fish out. I'm thinking I might have to take out the bala sharks, although I really don't want to because I love these guys and I love the activity level. Um, I have all these bifasciatus. I may have to take some of them out because they will start pairing up. Um, but we're going to take it one day at a time, one year at a time, because I do believe it will be years before I actually have to start taking them out. But yeah, that is a current look at the 350 gallon aquarium. This video is getting extremely long, so I'm getting ready to cut it off for you guys. But a very interesting aquarium. Um, it changes all the time, and it's just awesome. So yeah, let me know what you think about this aquarium. What is your favorite fish in this aquarium? Um, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Hope you enjoyed. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.